Greetings and salutations, loyal viewers and listeners over on Spotify and Apple's podcasting platform. Thank you guys so much for signing up and giving me such a good reviews and good response. Really appreciate it. Today, we're going to do a deep dive in a fight between lefties because Cenk Uger and the Young Turks and Nina Turner specifically have gotten into it with one Jimmy Dore. It's hilarious. We're going to go into it. We're going to search it up. We're going to put it down. We're going to serve it up. And that's what today's topic of today's video is because it's all fun when you watch the other side flame each other based on what I think are a lot of personal disputes that really don't have that much substance behind them. However, this video is in fact sponsored, so we're going to talk about the sponsor. So let me toss it over to the sponsor, you know, like I'm tossing a baby, and then I'll bring it back over here and we'll discuss it on the other side. There's a diet that's out there that's really popular among celebrities, among athletes, and about 13 million Americans are on it right now. Of course, it's called the keto diet, and the way it works in principle is you reduce the amount of energy that you're getting for carbs, and you substitute it with other things. And in fact, members of my own family, including my mother, are on the keto diet. But the thing is, for normal everyday people, results can be slow. This is one of the reasons why you need something to boost you up, and why I recommend Keto with Justice. This powder enhances a lot of the factors of the keto diet, can help produce ketones, and prolong your state of ketosis. And one of the great things about this is that you can get this powder from KetoWithJustice.com for 51% off. Also, there's a 60-day money-back guarantee. So again, Keto Powder, KetoWithJustice.com, 50% off, and a 60-day money-back guarantee. Now, before we get into this, obviously, you guys have sent me the clip. I've seen the clip of Jimmy Dore saying nice things about me. Let me play the clip for you guys out there on the internet.com so you can understand that I'm not hiding anything up my sleeve, which I'm not of you wearing a long sleeve shirt because I work for my bedroom. Here's another one. Uh, oh, this is uh, this guy. I watch his videos, right? So this guy's a right winger who I told oh, yeah, Sean. Sean. I don't agree with him on anything, but he does make entertaining videos, and I think he's I think he's honest. I think he calls them how he sees them. I think he has a bias, but I don't think he lies. Right? That's why he's worth watching. I think. Because it's not talking points. The, and, and the irony me, is the only people who don't use talking points are the ones that they attack and say you're using you're talking, talking points. Right. So he hates me. He, believe me, he's no fan of mine. This guy doesn't like me. And he doesn't like anything I stand for. But he said this. He goes, I do love, I love to do videos on where I disagree with Jimmy Dore. But every time that he's trending, it's because people he's further left than are calling him a secret right winger. It's ridiculous. I disagree with him because he's on the left. He's not remotely conservative. Stop lying. You guys are both in the same boat. I hope you know. Both you and Sean. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Now, I know a lot of people think that if somebody says something nice about you on the internet.com, then therefore you are somehow really good friends, you're going to be aligned, you're going to use the kid gloves, but in reality, that is not the case. I still maintain that Jimmy Dore is further to the left than the Young Turks. I don't hate him. I don't know where he got that. I don't hate Jank or Anna. I disagree with them vehemently, but I don't hate them. But Jimmy Dore is further to the left than the Young Turks. He holds more radical left-wing positions than the Young Turks. And the thing that I hate, the thing that I despise, the thing that I dislike are people who are conservatives who see Jimmy Dore be correct on free speech or be correct on another issue and then all of a sudden jump on board and pretend like he's somehow not more left than these other people that are wrong on those issues. You can agree with somebody on an issue like censorship. You can agree with somebody on some things related to foreign policy, even international trade to a certain extent, without jumping on board and saying that they're more reasonable. In reality, people are complicated. They hold complicated positions. Now, my biggest issue with Dore and one of my biggest issues with the Young Turks was the fact that I found a lot of their rhetoric absolutely hysterical and might lead to people perpetuating violence out there in the real world. And I'm talking specifically about the rhetoric around the police. Now, I believe in free speech. And unless you specifically call for a direct action against a specific person, you know, a tangible threat under law, I don't think you're prosecutable under that. However, I do think that you need to calm it down. And I've been told by a lot of people, again, I'm not a huge watcher of Jimmy Dore's show, that on specific issues, he has kind of pulled back on that specific type of rhetoric. The Young Turks, who I watch a lot more because I do a lot more videos disagreeing with them, are calling for violence and telling you that Tucker Carlson is going to send people to slaughter you. If he lives Tucker or dies, Carlson but he wants to be interviewed. Tucker Carlson wants to slaughter you. 
okay? Yeah. Not personally, Tucker Carlson would never get his hands dirty. But he encourages others to want to slaughter you, to slaughter you. The right wing is vicious. They can't wait to slaughter people. They fantasize about it every day. They even put it in their political ads. The left at this point needs to be smart, get trained, arm yourselves. I don't know what's coming at this point. But how many times does the right wing need to tell you that they want to slaughter you to slaughter you? To slaughter you! To slaughter you! To slaughter you! So really, the focus of my ire in that department remains on TYT a bit more. But overall, Jimmy Dore further to the left than the Young Turks. There may be some things I agree with him over the Young Turks on, but that does not make him more on my side. That just means we agree on that specific issue. And if you were to break it down, slice it up, whatever, whatever, because the Young Turks are more moderate, likely I would find more agreement with them overall, even if the issues that they focus on and the issues that I focus them focusing on, you know, response videos, always weird with the language, that would make me respond to them more. You, you, you get how that works? You understand it? Can we move forward without I getting all the Jimmy Dore people in the comments of my video talking about how actually Jimmy Dore is more reasonable when he says members of the squad are not far left enough. Also, and this is very important, Jimmy you're too blown out. You're too oversaturated. What is going on with the color balancing and the lighting in your videos? Look, I'm going to take this image into the lab and I'm going to fix it for you so you don't look so insane. All you have to do is play with these little sliders and you could fix the video. Let me show you how my color grade fixes your ridiculous color grade right here. Get it? Got it? Good? You understand? Now let's get into the TYT video. Turner's awesome. Let me just say that off the bat. And this story has to do with Nina Turner. So this video opens right away off the bat with something that's kind of hilarious, and that is Anna Kasparian saying that Nina Turner is awesome. Now, this should go without saying, considering the Young Turks employs Nina Turner on their network, and did so, by the way, while she was running for Congress, aka they have less ethics than Fox News, who will actually fire employees if they're speculating about running for president so that that way they don't hurt their reputation. But TYT says, no, let's pay you, corporate pay to play, maybe while you're running for Congress so that way you have a stable income and you could pop in and essentially campaign on our official network and I'm sure that's not a big deal that's going to skirt election laws no 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 don't worry about it the Young Turks all about getting rid of money out of politics let us give a candidate a salary and then put her on air so that she has a giant megaphone because you know we're really against people having unfair advantages due to money and access to media and ridiculous people attacking her. But before I get to those details, let me just preface it by saying, when it comes to putting a show together, it takes a lot of work, a lot of reading, a lot of research, a lot of production work. We don't just come on air and speak off the cuff without having an entire production process behind it. Okay, so obviously we have to pause for station identification right here because you might be under the misconception that Anna Kasparian recently quit her job at the Young Turks and moved on to somewhere else. She just talked about how the Young Turks does a lot of research. 10,000 IQ researchers go into making the show. They have production meetings and all this other stuff, and they don't just spout off at the mouth about random things. Now, I'm going to use this example because I've covered this on this channel, but it is far from the only example. Of course, it is the Kyle Rittenhouse case. The Kyle Rittenhouse videos, all of them, everything that was relevant were out in the public around 15 minutes after the shooting. Anybody can find them. Yet Anna Kasparian had to issue a mea culpa and admitted in that video, according to her, that she had not watched those videos, again, readily available online for everybody in the world to see 15 minutes after the incident a year later. There are multiple videos from that night. The first First video was Kyle Rittenhouse literally chasing a protester into a parking lot. And initially, I was under the assumption that Rittenhouse was the person who was chasing after Joseph Rosenbaum, that, that that's how it had started. But I was wrong about that, okay? So I wanna correct the record, I was in fact wrong about that. Someone uh, taking a skateboard and hitting uh, Rittenhouse over the head with it as he's on his back. And I haven't seen this video yet, but it was already, uh, you know, uh, uh, the New York Times says it's on tape. And I haven't seen this video yet, but it was already, uh, you know, uh, uh, 
the New York Times says it's on tape. So she was doing with Jank and all the TYT crew misinformation, misrepresenting what was on the video over and over again repeatedly, even though all this stuff was debunked. On top of that, I have an entire compilation of Anna Kasparian talking about Kyle Rittenhouse crossing state lines. Let me play that for you. Wouldn't go out of his way to go to a protest who crossed state lines. He drove from Illinois to Kenosha, Wisconsin. Now again, he drove from Illinois to Wisconsin. It's not like he was in his front yard yeah. and he was approached by a group of individuals who posed an imminent threat to his life. He drove across state lines in a state that he doesn't even live in. Because obviously we're dealing with a 17 year old from out of state. And then he crossed state lines with it. He crossed state lines, meaning he traveled across state lines. He traveled there from out of state who again, uh, traveled across state lines. So he did not cross state lines with an illegal gun. Turns out Kyle Rittenhouse did not cross state lines with an illegal gun. And this was also readily available information out there in the public. On top of that, Anna Kasparian was making up stuff about Kyle Rittenhouse's mother, giving him the gun, driving across state lines and dropping him off at the riot. This was also not true. And again, was readily available information shortly after the incident that Anna Kasparian continued to repeat. And again, this isn't the only incident. We did a video way back when, when Anna Kasparian and the Young Turks talked about the Breonna Taylor case. And what was odd about this video is the fact that they mentioned all the things in that video that were originally reported that were wrong about the Breonna Taylor case after they on their channel had already done a video correcting the misinformation. So they essentially did a reset on the Breonna Taylor case. Also the Jasmine Barnes case where TYT made endless videos about how this little girl who was tragically murdered must have been murdered by Trumpers and it was a racist hate crime and all this other stuff. When in reality, the police were not saying it was a hate crime. They said that they were exploring all possibilities and that was just speculation made up by the Young Turks. On top of that, they were linking the murder of this seven-year-old girl who was murdered on New Year's Day at around five in the morning to Trump supporters based on the fact that the guy had a red hood and not a red cap. Oh, so you said that it was a white guy. What happened? On top of that, there's also the Michael Reinhold case where they backed this guy who stalked and murdered Jay Danielson, played his vice interview and pretended like his self-defense cases were valid. I know I just threw a lot of things at you, but trust me, I got videos on every single one of those issues. You can look into them, links in the description. And these were all instances where TYT was either speculating without warrant or they were just making stuff up after contradictory evidence that was easily accessible had been produced. Oh, so you said that it was a white guy. What happened? So yeah, to have Anna Kasparian look you dead in the face and talk about how much more difficult her show is to produce and how they have this whole staff that does production meetings and they have notes and they don't just shoot from the hip. When we've seen all those staff members, everybody in that production meeting, Anna Kasparian, Cenk Uger, and everyone at the Young Turks failed the basic test of stating the basic facts accurately a year after they were available it's laughable it's a joke it's hilarious and it should be mocked to the death but then there are people who literally just spend their time going on twitter accusing people of things they haven't done causing all this drama and then they spend all of their time just talking about the drama and reading tweets on their show and in that regard i give you jimmy Dore, one of the laziest untalented people literally on the planet. Now look, I'm not a fan of Jimmy Dore. I did a whole section earlier in the video where I played a clip of him complimenting me just so I could tell you, still not a fan, no matter what the rules of the internet decorum actually are. However, to say he's untalented is a bit ridiculous. I've actually seen one of Jimmy Dore's Comedy Central Presents episodes, and the guy's legitimately funny. Unlike the other non-comedians that call themselves comedians on The Young Turks today, that I've never seen anything hilarious from them either on or off the show, or any evidence that they've ever participated in anything labeled comedy. So to say he's untalented is a little bit absurd. Also, coming from Anna Kasparian, who got her job at TYT, according to TYT, own documentary because she was a 20 year old intern willing to work for free when Jank had no money to pay anybody is a bit absurd. It's a bit of projection and it's a little bit embarrassing, Anna. It seems like you got a little bit of that imposter.
imposter syndrome because in reality, Anna Kasparian putting her opinions out on the internet alone without the backing of a company like the Young Turks, without the vision of something like Jank Built in TYT, wouldn't really produce anything. Anna Kasparian, even on TYT, was brought in for these one-off segments where they would talk about the trashiest pop culture vulgar topics because that's what her job was. She only pretends now to be this very serious political contributor, but we all know where she came from. And by the way, through that time, I think she's developed into a fine presenter. I'm not just trying to dig at her, but if you're going to go after somebody for being untalented or unfunny or whatever, and in reality, you essentially walked in at the right moment at a company and just hung around, even though you should have theoretically had better opportunities on your own, then maybe you got to deal with the stuff, sort what's going on in your personal life, because it seems like you feel quite mediocre and you're just projecting that onto somebody who, again, before he even met Jenk was doing Comedy Central Presents specials. Also, and I cannot go without bringing this up, and whether or not they're going to accuse Jimmy Dore of maybe getting a ghostwriter or anything like that, it doesn't matter. Because in reality, when Jimmy Dore started selling a book, the book was already written. Jank started selling his book in May of 2020. So here, I got a hard copy with me here too. Uh, is it already written? Uh, nope. Uh, <laughs> some of it is written, but I'm working on the rest. So what you can do now, it's not out yet. You can pre-order. Yeah, I have a whole video talking about how he kept moving the dates. Now the date has been moved to September 23rd, 2023. He's pushed this thing all the way back and he started selling it in May. And it seemed like at the time he was intending this to come around at around the 2020 election cycle. So Jenk is selling a book that he hasn't written. Anna Kasparian is allegedly writing a book. And I kind of find it funny how they take all these pot shots at Jimmy Dore and even Dave Rubin, who in the time, by the way, that Jenk has announced his book has published a brand new book, his second one, by the way, which was announced after Jenk, almost a year after Jenk, and published before Jenks has come out. Because yes, Jenks almost finished 206 page book is still not out at this point. So you can't really get away with calling somebody who actually published a book before they started selling it a grifter and somebody who's untalented when your boss man can't write 206 pages, even though he had a giant head start. This ain't a George R. R. Martin situation where you have to tie together all the plot threads from two books that were split and intended to originally be one book into one giant book, The Winds of Winter. And by the way, start the betting odds on which is coming out first. The Winds of Winter from George R. R. Martin or Jank Uger's Justice is Coming. It's always coming. You can pay for it definitely right now, but don't expect that book to be delivered at the date promise, September 23rd, 2023. Let's be honest. And so he decided, hmm, Nina Turner tweeted something. Why don't I attack her? She tweeted this. My prediction of the fallout of the FBI raiding Mar-a-Lago is that we're probably going to see a bunch of MAGA Republicans call to abolish the FBI. That is a, like, it is a fact. She has made an observation and that observation has been proven to be correct based on all the MAGA chuds calling for the FBI to be defunded. So the Young Turks reads Nina Turner's tweet, and then they go on this whole rant about how they're right. It's the most obvious thing in the world, though, what Nina Turner said. If something bad happens to Trump, a lot of the people who absolutely love Trump will immediately target the author of Trump's peril in their mind. In this case, it is the FBI. However, I do want to point out that people on the right have been calling the FBI into a question for years, but whatever, whatever, they didn't need two minutes of a rant to get to Jimmy Dore's thing. But what this is, is padding in their show, which which is about reading tweets as they criticize Jimmy Dore for doing a show that's about reading tweets. So I, I thought that tweet was great. But uh, Jimmy Dore in his uh, thirsty quest for content, so he doesn't have to actually do any work or give you uh, reporting on actual news, decided to quote tweet this and said, when lefties cheer on the FBI, you know they're serious about being a Democrat. What? I mean, I. I don't know, maybe uh, my comprehension skills are not up to par, Jenk. Where exactly did she cheer on the FBI? So you know what's great about this? What's great about this moment in time, this little bit of a time capsule of the fight, 
is that Jimmy Dore clearly and obviously right here, in my opinion, jumped the gun. Nina Turner was calling out hypocrisy amongst the Republicans. I can't believe I'm even remotely defending Nina Turner, the goofball that she is. And Jimmy Dore assumed that she was cheering on the FBI in order to get Trump. If Nina Turner had just pointed out that Jimmy Dore is looking for attention or just give him a slap back based on what he actually said, then Nina Turner would have won the day and wouldn't look ridiculous. Now, Jenk is going to go into his rant about how Jimmy Dore, such a right winger. Jimmy Dore, the guy who wanted to hold up the whole government over a Medicare for all boat that I actually thought was symbolic in my personal opinion. Nah, nah, that, that guy, super right wing, super bad person. Jenk is the guy, by the way, who, when they were thinking about trying to do this and holding Nancy Pelosi's speakership up for hostage, was making the argument that you could make a Republican the Speaker of House by doing so, as if that's how it worked. On top of that, that doesn't make any sense because it's not like even if if a Republican were the Speaker of the House with an opposite party majority, you would end up with effectively a non-Democrat as Speaker of the House. None of it made any sense, but whatever, Jimmy Dore, super right wing, because he wanted to hold the Speakership hostage over what he thought was an important vote, and I thought was not an important vote, aka the issue of Medicare for All. And look, so he's doing a classic right wing thing, that's who he is in these days, uh, not just attacking progressives, never criticizing. The right wing part of what he's doing there is he's protecting Donald Trump. So Jimmy Dore is not protecting Donald Trump. As I talked about earlier, Jimmy Dore is very anti-cop. He's very anti-FBI. So what he's doing is saying that the FBI is bad. You shouldn't trust the FBI. And he's trying to apply that standard equally, even in the circumstances like in Donald Trump. Jenk is trying to make the argument, but it's kind of messed up when he's smearing Jimmy Dore as some right winger, that the FBI is bad solely because of their actions and not because they're inherently bad. And therefore, when they do things that I like, aka go after Donald Trump, I think it's acceptable. Now, wherever you fall on this, that's totally fine. But you can understand how people on the left can actually hold both positions. There's a lot of lefties who believe that the goal of the left should be to infiltrate institutions like the FBI. And there's also the burn it down crowd like Jimmy Dore who want to get rid of the FBI because due to their past actions and according to them ongoing actions, they are irredeemably corrupt. So Jimmy Dore is basically saying, if the Republicans want you to join up with them on defunding the FBI, whether or not you agree or disagree about Trump, it doesn't matter because the goal of getting rid of the FBI is a good in and of itself. Jenk doesn't agree. Jenk doesn't think that you should let the hypocrisy go unchallenged. He's not taking yes for an answer if that was his goal. But in reality, Jenk doesn't want to get rid of the FBI. So therefore, he's castigating Jimmy Dore as a right winger, which again, makes no sense. You're essentially watching the Noam Chomsky left which Jimmy Dore's on go after a different section of maybe a more pragmatic left but Jenk doesn't know how to do anything like he's not a bumbling idiot so he's just making this about you must be right wing if you disagree with me even if those disagreements are are disagreements from the left. Again, this is like watching a bunch of people who call themselves socialists, but they have this goofy qualifier in front of them, and in reality, they might not disagree on all that much, but based on their petty differences, they end up fighting to the death over them, and you as a spectator, as a normal person, point and laugh at the whole situation. No, you knucklehead, as with all of your MAGA friends, Jimmy. And by the way, the reason Cenk Uger is going with the whole Jimmy Dore is right wing tactic of argumentation is because Jimmy outflanked him on his very own concept of how politics works with the whole force the vote situation. Now, I talked about on this channel how I don't think force the vote would have actually worked. It wouldn't have gotten Medicare for all passed, and even people who voted in favor of it knowing it's going to lose wouldn't give you an accurate accounting of who actually supports Medicare for all. For instance, a bunch of senators who were running for president all co-sponsored Bernie Sanders' health care bill, but when they got on the debate stage and they needed to differentiate themselves from Bernie, what did they do? They dropped it. Kamala Harris would raise her hand in the debate and say she's going to get rid of private insurers. And then 15 minutes later in her post-game interview, she would talk about how, oh no, that's not what I actually raised my hand to. These are the tricks and things that politicians do, especially when they know something's not going to pass. So I didn't think Jimmy Dore would actually get the accurate information 
from the vote that he was hoping for, like his plan suggested. However, Jank operates under the same philosophy as Jimmy Dore, that everybody really wants Medicare for all, and progressives need to stand up and fight for it, and in reality, he didn't want them to do the vote, in my opinion, this is just my speculation, because he was aligned with members of the squad, and they didn't want to do it, so Jank didn't want to harm the relationship that he had with these members, especially since Justice Democrats, the organization, had already distanced themselves from Jank due to his past comments about women. So that's what I think happened, and that's why Jank has resorted to calling Jimmy Dore right wing and also Jimmy Dore calls Jank right wing it's a whole thing it's a mess but the underlying idea even though I think it's dead wrong and not how politics works at all should be shared by both Jank and Jimmy but the fact that Jank didn't do it obviously left him vulnerable for attack and his only way out of it is to say actually Jimmy Dore secret right winger Jimmy Dore bad person no good dumb dumb idiot who sold out to the right wing except he has a bunch of Patreon people that support him so I guess he sold out to the right wing in that he uh did right wing patrons that somehow patreoned him and they're DMing him and they're like Jimmy go to the right D doesn't make any sense it's absolutely nonsensical and it's double nonsensical from a guy like Cenk Uger who created a whole entire show called aggressive progressives where he would have Jimmy Dore and Steve-O people Cenk said were more progressive than him talk about the super progressive issues in order to rope in their core base so Cenk at one point admitted that Jimmy Dore was more progressive than he was but now all of a sudden it's that he's right wing because Jimmy Dore outflanked him on an issue based on how Cenk Uger presented the way politics works and by the way jimmy Dore has acknowledged that he learned these kind of tactics from jank uger uh it's possible that the fbi can do a good investigation for example they've stopped a number of right-wing domestic terrorists from murdering people where they can go hey credit to them that that's a good investigation i'm glad they stopped that and it's possible that the fbi can do terrible things and then as a news person you would tell your audience this is when they did good this is when they did bad right instead no FBI bad. They're going after beloved Trump. Don't do it. The only people that are bad, progressives. By the way, I'm on the left. Are you? Now, Jing talks about the FBI averting terrorist plots and saving lives, and the FBI catching the people who are responsible for these kind of attacks or other violent crimes. And he says, oh, that's a good thing, and we should support that, as if everybody in the United States of America doesn't support that. Now, he doesn't mention cases where there might have been FBI entrapment. In fact, entrapment won as a defense in the Gretchen Whitmer plot, which were announced months before the election, or like a month and a half before the election, and obviously had political implications for the presidential election or anything like that because he doesn't want to get into it and what he's trying to imply by specifically mentioning right-wing extremists is that Jimmy Dore doesn't want people to go after right-wing extremists again Jimmy Dore not a fan of the right wing I've heard him say absolutely vicious and disgusting things about the other side I think it's due to a fact that he has a lack of understanding of the other side but whatever whatever Jenk is trying to imply that he's somehow pro right-wing terrorism and that's why he's against the FBI which is very disingenuous and honestly disgusting now uh, Jimmy Dore has been attacking Nina Turner pretty relentlessly since he's made his pivot to the right and let's be clear he's a right winger he is 100% uh, right if you're a higher. left winger who still thinks Jimmy Dore is on the left when he never criticizes Trump Tucker Carlson anyone in the right wing never ever ever does it and only attacks people on the left and forget corporate Democrats we hate corporate Democrats he attacks the most progressive people in the country and you still don't get that he's not on the left? Oh, I feel terrible for you, Jesus. And there's no hope for you anyway, go watch him, no hope at all. Again, this is one of the most annoying things in American politics and you experience it left, right and center. There's always this talk about people on the right wing and counter signaling, how if you criticize people on the right, you're actually counter signaling your own side, therefore you're working for the left, therefore you're a traitor, therefore we should treat you terribly. And the thing is, this often comes from people who relentlessly attack people quote unquote on their own side, just based on personal animus. Cenk is doing the same thing right here. In reality, it is okay to criticize people and politicians that you might support when you think they're doing something wrong. Just because you like them personally, just because you founded an organization like Justice Democrats in order to get them elected, doesn't mean you should put your own personal pride or your wanting access to these people above what you're actually trying to achieve. So yeah, Jenk, this just doesn't make any sense. 
as a way of saying Jimmy Dore is a right winger, especially if you're somebody on the right and you know how people on the right often argue around these same parameters, you should be able to understand these nonsense tactics when they're presented. So Nina Turner slaps him down. When Jimmy Dore knocks a black progressive woman for pointing out conservatives hypocrisy when it comes to the FBI, you know he's serious about being anti-black and protecting conservatives. So the Young Turks are like, here's Nina Turner slapping him down. And what does Nina Turner do? She doesn't really address the points at hand. She actually focuses on the fact that she is a poor victim because she's a black progressive woman in the United States of America and labels Jimmy Dore anti-black. So her response is to call him racist. So you had Jimmy Dore kind of flat-footed, really not focusing on what Nina Turner actually said, maybe jumping the gun. And the first thing that Nina Turner does is play the victim and try to smear Jimmy Dore and then of course it's on. PYT can call this Nina Turner slapping down Jimmy Dore but in reality this is clearly snatching defeat from the jaws of victory and it's just embarrassing. He loves to protect conservatives and there's a reason for that. Uh, he has audience capture issues because his audience is overwhelmingly right wing. If he ever says anything that's even a little critical of a right wing politician, they lose their minds. And I'll provide evidence of that in just a moment. So right there, Anna Kasparian, with her top researchers over at the Young Turks, just pledged to her audience out there, all of you watching, that she is going to present evidence that not only is Jimmy Dore right wing, but he's right wing because his right wing audience, audience captured him all. Are you guys expecting anything other than an absolute objective failure from Anna Kasparian? Or are you expecting her to actually bring the goods and be proving the fact that Jimmy Dore, such a right winger, oh my god, he had everybody deceived, even Cenk Uger back in the day when Cenk Uger asked him to campaign for him and gave him a show on the Young Turk called Aggressive Progressives because he thought Jimmy Dore was too progressive for the main show and he needed something to lure in that core group of progressives and he thought Jimmy Dore would be the perfect face of that show. Now, of course, the answer is no. They're definitely not going to prove what Anna Kasparian thinks she's going to prove. But don't worry about it because they're going to fill the gap between when they actually state that they're going to prove this and the evidence provided with a whole bunch of other ancillary nonsense about how Nina Turner sits on a board, but that board's not bad. But Jimmy Dore thinks that if you sit on a board overseeing the police, then you're emphasized to keep the police around. Whatever, whatever. Not really interested in that. That's all trashy garbage back and forth. What I'm going to get to is this next tweet. Um, and finally, Nina Turner responds to that by saying, let me be clear, Jimmy Dore repackages anti-blackness and right-wing talking points and sells it in a way that some leftists are willing to buy, very few by the way. He has used right-wing talking points against me multiple times and even defended Rittenhouse. He makes millions doing it. Again, this is just a worthless tweet that Anna Kasparian is highlighting as her nailing it, when in reality, it's absolutely objectively nonsense. First and foremost, she's calling Jimmy Dore a racist because she has no counter-argument against him, and she just wants to smear him because that's the go-to tactic from members at the Young Turks. So that's what we have right there. Even though Jimmy Dore didn't say anything about race, even though Jimmy Dore would be complaining about the FBI because of their history with figures like Martin Luther King or the Black Panthers or whatever. Doesn't matter. He's a white person. This is an easy way out of the conversation. And also, let me sprinkle on that Jimmy Dore defended Kyle Rittenhouse as if Kyle Rittenhouse's case wasn't caught wire to wire on video. And all Jimmy Dore did in that situation was watch the videos, unlike the Young Turks, which Anna Kasparian had to admit to a year later. By the way, Nina Turner still spreading misinformation about the Kyle Rittenhouse case because that's how devoid from reality that she she actually is. On top of that, to say that Jimmy Dore defended Rittenhouse is a bit deceptive. Jimmy Dore acknowledged that the Rittenhouse case, as presented by the media, was BS because it was, in fact, BS, that it was a self defense case. But if you were to pin him down and ask him if he thinks that Kyle Rittenhouse should have been out there, if he thinks that Kyle Rittenhouse should have had a gun, if he thinks protesters, right wing or left wing, should go out and carry guns, more likely than not, he's definitely going to say no. More likely than not, Jimmy Dore is going to back the people destroying the city of Kenosha, the businesses and all that in protest of Jacob Blake, which by the way, was also a nonsensical case. Jimmy Dore is really anti-police officer. He's not in favor of them, doesn't like them, cannot play with them, cannot win with them, can't coach with them. Cannot play with them, cannot win with them, cannot coach with them. 
Can't do it. So the idea that he acknowledges that once everybody's there and the fight ensues, Rittenhouse is fully within his rights to defend himself doesn't mean that Jimmy Dore overall likes Kyle Rittenhouse or thinks him going there in the first place is a good idea. And by the way, Kyle Rittenhouse himself says he wished he never went there because he didn't want to be in a situation where he ended up killing people. So yeah, nonsensical, embarrassing from Nina Turner, but Anna Kasparian's going to drop the proof on us that Jimmy Dore's audience is right wing and they've captured him and made him right wing. Remember, it was Jimmy Dore who called for an alliance with the freaking Boogaloo Boys. That's what he called for. The Boogaloo Boys who have this, I don't know if they still do, but their whole strategy was to infiltrate uh, black organizations and Black Lives Matter to start a what? A race war. So yeah, he wants an alliance with them. So again, Anna Kasparian trying to feed into the idea that Jimmy Dore is this evil white racist and he's a racist. And he even said that he wanted to align with somebody who wants to infiltrate Black Lives Matter to start a race war. Is that really what the guy said? Absolutely not. I'll show you some clips of this guy that Jimmy Dore said he would align with after talking to him just so you can hear it, just so you can see it for yourself, and just so you can know how dishonest Anna Kasparian and Cenk Uger are over at the Young Turks. You're you're anti-war, you're for peace, you're against racism, you're against police brutality. What else, What would be some other big things? Uh, Pro-sex work decriminalization, legalize all drugs, uh, end all the wars, uh, close the ICE detainment camps. Pretty much our, our core foundation is if, you know, if you're not a bigoted piece of shit and you understand that both parties are the problem and you're willing to do something about it and you're willing to get out in the streets and you're willing to make your voice heard, you're welcome. It doesn't matter where you come from or what you do. You don't hate the gays? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Okay. okay. Well, I was told matter, that. Matter of fact, I'm not the most straight man myself. The guy's a gay Black Lives Matter supporter who's wearing a Hawaiian shirt. Unsurprisingly, Jimmy Dore wanted to be aligned with this person after talking to him. Now, whether or not this guy was lying or whatever, whatever, who really cares? Not me. This is not a major portion of the population. But this smear is on the level of the people who smeared Jank Uger for interviewing David Duke, even though Jank went after David Duke over and over again. And recently, as said in a tweet, which was a smear, people say Jank was joking about David Duke not being racist, even though in the context of the interview, and you could check it out for yourself, Jank Uger was laughing at David Duke for saying that he wasn't racist, and yet people on the left smear Jank like this, Jank doesn't like that, and yet the Young Turks constantly does the same exact thing to other people. They pioneer the technique, it's their whole business model, and you just saw Anna Kasparian do it right there in that moment. Of all the things he's done, look, everything he does these days is absolutely humiliating. Uh, but uh, when he did the, uh, hey, I'm for vaccines. Oh man, those videos aren't doing well. Now I'm vaccine skeptical. Oh, those videos are doing great. I now do 20 of them. And you saw him flip flop and appeal to the lunatic right wing right in front of your eyes. If you still think he's left wing, I mean, come on, man. It just, just again, no help for you. I'm sorry, but no, absolutely not, no way. The idea that being vaccine skeptical is a right wing thing is absurd. First and foremost, Trump, who Jenk is measuring your right and leftness by, is incredibly pro the vaccine. Trump acts like he invented the vaccine, and skepticism of big pharma and their products used to be all across the board a very strong left wing position. Bill Maher, who is less to the left than Jenk Uger, is somebody who's vaccine skeptical because Bill Maher's a Hollywood comedian type and a lot of these people believe in this woo-woo alternative medicine whatever whatever get rid of big pharma don't trust GMOs nuclear power is bad and I don't know about the level of vaccines and all that on top of that the COVID one is a relatively new vaccine and a lot of the promises that were made about it turned out to be not true on top of that Jimmy Dore claims that he has this rare medical condition now he's talked about this before in non-relation to the vaccine and that some of the symptoms for him were more severe than for other people so that might have gotten him mad a lot of people when they hear a story or when something happens to them assume that there's a broader problem but the idea that he's attacking big pharma and therefore he's right wing is absurd in every possible way just because joe biden got on board for vaccine mandates and so did the young turks by the way while denying that they were mandates doesn't mean that everybody who's worried about this vaccine in particular or falls into the woo woo i'm an actor let's grind up some roots and drink that in a tea because that will cure cancer category 
are in fact on the right. It's just not the case. It's something that the horseshoe is in fact real about in terms of vaccines overall. And just because the COVID thing was seen as a Democrat versus Republican thing doesn't mean that if you happen to fall on that specific one or be against the mandates or whatever, that you are inherently right or left wing. Now, let's talk about what happens when Jimmy just lightly critiques a right winger, okay? How does his audience react? You could tell a lot about the uh, type of programming Jimmy does based on the audience he has fostered. Are you guys ready for this? This is what Anna Kasparian promised. This is what Anna Kasparian is gonna deliver. This is Anna Kasparian proving that Jimmy Dore's audience is really right wing and she's gonna show you because Jimmy Dore is gonna attack a right winger and people in his audience are gonna do something. I don't know, let me not spoil it. Let's go to the clip. So here's an example of something that we might report on here at TYT. Healthcare for veterans hurts the economy, says Rand Paul. So I haven't watched the video, but I'm assuming that in it, Jimmy is critical toward Rand Paul for wanting to deny health care to veterans. Oh, great. So his left wing audience will be very receptive uh, to that. They'd be appreciative, okay, right? So the Young Turks lay out this scenario about Jimmy Dore putting out a video criticizing Rand Paul, and he's criticizing Rand Paul because Rand Paul supposedly wanted to deny health care to veterans. Therefore, therefore, he's a bad person. And they're saying that the test of Jimmy Dore's right wingness is whether or not his audience would respond positively to this and the thing that they do is pull up some comments and that's going to be their evidence that Jimmy Dore's audience is right wing that being said I actually looked at the videos like to dislike ratio you know because I actually had that YouTube plugin and he's still well above water it's a two to one ratio but maybe that's for another reason but we'll get into that a little bit later see how it turned yeah, out um, except no not appreciative they hated it um, here are the top comments okay so this is the top comment upvoted by 208 people Think Jimmy made a mistake with this one. Yeah, criticizing a Republican, can't have can't it. Can't have it. Sounds like Rand is saying the bill is being sold as if veterans injured in war, but it's not doing that. It's uh, something, I don't know, it's uh, censored, money away. Uh, next one, love you, Jimmy, but it's not what he said. He's against using the vets to market bills that hardly benefit them and include massive piggybacked funding wish lists. Wait a minute, that's your evidence? Two comments, one that was voted up by a couple hundred people that Jimmy Dore's audience is right wing. This is why Anna Kasparian and her crack team of researchers that she talked about at the opening of the video should actually take in the time to watch the video and see what Jimmy Dore said or know anything about the issue. Anna didn't even read the full comment. They didn't even screenshot it above where it says show more because that's how lazy they are as a news organization. This is one of the most embarrassing displays I've ever seen. Uh, yes, I'm sure. I'm sure that that's what's going on, right? Providing health care for our veterans is very bad because it might, I don't know, maybe provide in their minds health care for other people. I, I don't, what? Anyway, they didn't like that. They didn't like the video because they're just right wingers. Here's more. I'm not with you, Jimmy, on this one, but I still love your show. Well, I love it when you're kissing Republican ass, but you made a mistake with this one. I, you know what, there's some percentage chance Jimmy has already done a video going, you know what, my bad. So again, that comment could be interpreted in a bunch of different ways, but the Young Turks are trying to interpret it in the least positive, least fair way humanly possible, because all they are are smear merchants. Now, what's great about this is that the next comment, if you read some of it, it actually gives you a pretty good perspective on on what the objections to this Jimmy Dore video actually are. And the reason they didn't read it is because it starts with, Rand didn't say no to giving vets healthcare. He objected to 400 billion in spending that he thought was mostly gonna go to the waste more or less. Now, if the Young Turks would have done one tenth, 1% 1 of the research that they promised that they definitely do before they do the show, then they would have known that this is objectively nonsense and Rand Paul was actually 100% right. Jimmy was presenting it as if Rand Paul didn't care enough about the veterans, but one of Rand Paul's principal objections was to the issue of verification of the diagnoses because if you allocate a bunch of money for veterans injured specifically due to certain circumstances serving their country as veterans and you can get those conditions a bunch of different ways then there's a chance without verification that the people that you're trying to help will not be helped when a lot of money is being spent on people that you're not trying to solve their problems for. Hypertension and asthma were some of the conditions that were listed. There's no verification method for you to know that they got hypertension or asthma as a result of their time in combat, so a lot of this money would go to those conditions for people who happen to be in the military rather than the people who are actually negatively impacted by burn pits or the other problems that this legislation was specifically aimed to solve. On top of that, they cram the bills that are like saved 
the Veterans and Love America Act with a bunch of other frivolous spending in order to get it through so that they can call you a bad person if you don't vote for it. Rand Paul doesn't play those games, which is one of the reasons why he had those objections. Jimmy Dore didn't give Rand Paul a fair reading of his argument in his video. The commenters, some of them were calling him out on it. And by the way, you can agree with a Republican who points out that a lot of this money being allocated to this good cause that we want to solve is clearly going to be misspent without being somebody who's on the right wing or anything like that. You can call out that a lot of pet projects and frivolous spending was loaded up into this bill and you don't want to vote for it and have progressives agree with you without, again, being aligned with Rand Paul on most of the issues. What if Rand Paul was objecting to an oil subsidy that was tucked into this veterans legislation? By the way, John Stewart actually complained about this being added and removed and arguments over that in relation to the 9-11 first responders health care bill. So this isn't something that hasn't happened before. This isn't something that hasn't held up good legislation before meant to help people who deserve it. And Rand Paul's objection is 100% fair. And I would argue that Jimmy Jor was not right. But the Young Turks using commenters who actually listened to what Rand Paul said, who were telling Jimmy Dore that as proof that they're all right wing are absurd in every possible way. You can be left wing and agree with Rand Paul on that specific issue because Rand Paul was correct on that specific issue. Look, it is absolutely wild how crazy the left wing can get in their nastiness, in their infighting, and it's outright insanity that they always accuse each other of being secret right wingers. They can never address the points at hand. And while it's funny, it's actually kind of frustrating because there's a whole entire hour long interview connected to this that I just don't have time for in this video. Now, if you want me to talk about that, if you're interested in this topic, if you want me to go over Jank melting down in the Brianna Greyjoy interview, then I will do that. But let me know in the comments of this video and let me know by the tremendous like ratio to this video because I want those likes, I need those likes, and that will be proof positive that I should do a part two. Without it, no part two for you. But that's all I really have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, show me by leaving a like. Subscribe for more content. Follow me on all my social media. Support me via the support links in the description box of this video. This has been me talking about the thing that you heard me talk about for nearly an hour probably that's how long this video is going to be till next time